Hello, everyone. Today we have Mr. Stephen Howard. You may know him from his days of teaching science and social studies at Jones Middle or his current role as administrator of Pollocksville Elementary School. Oh, and he just happens to be the current reigning and undisputed champion, principal of the year 2020, Mr. Stephen Howard. Let's welcome in the class, everybody. Yay. So your first question, we like to start with a bell ringer. So just a quick and easy one. Um, when are you finally going to get that Harley Davidson? Uh, it'll probably be, once I get through with my doctorate, that will probably be the gift that I seek to get for myself. I can just picture you whipping down. <laughs> but, I, but I'll probably break a leg or an arm like the first time out or something. Make sure so. you have your life insurance in order. <laughs> <I will. laughs> All right, we're gonna start with some essential questions. Okay. And first, starting off easy, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to teach in Jones County. Um, so I grew up in Jones County. I grew up in Comfort. Uh, I went to Comfort Elementary, and then I went to Jones Middle, and then I graduated from Jones Senior High School in 1996. Um, after I graduated from high school in 1996, I went to LCC for two years. And while I was at LCC, um, I had some family hardships that came up and that kind of put school off for a little while because while I was at LCC, I was working at the State Employees Credit Union part-time and then there happened to be a full-time position that opened. So when I finished at LCC, I worked full-time at the State Employees Credit Union from like July of 98 until um, August of 2001 when I went back um, full-time to East Carolina to get my teaching degree. And then I graduated from East Carolina in 2003 um, with a BS in middle grades education. And I had three job offers that summer, one in Lenore County, one in the western part of the state, and one right here at Jones Middle School. And after doing a lot of thinking, um, because I knew my parents weren't getting any younger and I, being an only child, knew that I'd have to take care of them if something were to happen, I took the job at Jones Middle School. And this is the only place I've been in my whole career. Wow. I've done a multitude of things in Jones County schools, but this is the only place I've been. This is starting my 18th year here. Well, we're lucky to have you here. Well, thank you. Um, who, this might be a little dicey since you grew up here. So who was your favorite teacher growing up and how did that teacher influence your style and philosophy? Oh God. It's funny you asked that question. <laughs> the last time I was teacher of the year at the middle school for my district interview, that was one of the questions they asked. Uh -huh. And I told them there, I can't say that it was one specific teacher that made that much of an impact on my life because they all did. There are two teachers I had throughout my whole education career that I absolutely could not stand. And that was my second grade teacher and my seventh grade language arts teacher. But as I told those folks, even they made an impact because I said to myself when I became a teacher, I wasn't going to do things to children like they did to me to make me feel the way I felt. Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes the biggest impact on you is not always your favorite thing. It's I never need to do that. Um, how do you think students will remember you from your teaching days? Probably as being very comical because I tried to... <laughs> Um, as you know, teaching is 99% performance and 1% preparation. <laughs> um, so, you know, when you're up on the stage, quote unquote, at the front of the classroom, that's your time to shine. And I usually made sure that every day was kind of like a performance, something that they would remember. So I would definitely say that they would probably remember all the mishaps and slip of the tongues and comedic things that I would say and probably still say even the kids here at Pollocksville as a principal that's probably what they will remember too some of the things that I tell them. Did teacher Stephen or teacher Mr. Howard do things that principal Howard would have got him in trouble for? <laughs> um, yes. You, you don't have to answer. Principal Howard is probably a lot much more calmer than teacher Howard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and what, so what's the biggest difference between being a teacher and being a principal? Well, aside from the master's degree, right. <laughs> um, uh, they're really, it's really twofold. 
because you're really still a student, but it's in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest with you, like the days when teachers are out and I can sub, I take advantage of that because I miss being mm -hmm. in front of the classroom and doing things. Um, as a principal, you're really more of a teacher for like adults. Whereas as a classroom teacher, you're there as the teacher for those kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're really teaching in both roles. It's just your audience changes. Got you. Okay. And this being a different type of year, what's, what's been the hardest part about say like pandemic teaching or even from an administrator's point of view? probably seeing some of the struggles that the teachers have had to go through with just learning a whole new way in which to teach mm -hmm. because when I was in college, they didn't, they didn't teach you a way to teach without children inside the classroom. So it's definitely a learning curve. I would think for, I mean, I couldn't imagine being a first year teacher in a situation like this because there, I mean, college doesn't prepare you for virtual teaching. Even though you take some classes online, it's still talking about the respect of kids being in front of you to help get a point across to them. Got you. And it's almost even some veteran teachers are feeling like it's their first year. So oh, yeah. it's just a big way it is because it's a whole new mindset and mentality to accomplish. Mm -hmm. instruction on a day-to-day -day basis all that practice you've had over 20 years is no longer relevant <laughs> yeah. uh, and last for the essential questions how did it feel being recognized as principal of the year well I was honored that my colleagues thought enough of me um, to bestow the honor upon me um, I mean many people have probably heard me say over my career when I went back to school and got my master's degree I had no desire or inclination to be a principal. Um, I've always wanted to pursue a job in curriculum and instruction because that's where my heart is, is in the teaching and learning aspect of school. So to be in administration was really not something I wanted to seek out. Um, as I said in my speech at convocation for principal of the year, I mean, if, when I graduated in 2010 with my master's, if somebody had said, oh, you're going to be principal or principal of the year, I would have said, you're crazier than you look <laughs> because, and I mean, it was not something that I actively um, sought to do. Um, Dr. Bracey was very honest with me one day when we were having a conversation and told me that in order to ultimately do what I wanted to do, I would have to take that step to at least get some experience mm -hmm. under my belt. And looking back, at the time, I didn't want to accept it or believe that that's what I had to do. But looking back, I see now why he said that. Okay. Just because of like the budgetary and um, management of resources and people and stuff. More of a, like a big picture thing than you don't necessarily yeah. get in your classroom. And where I was, I guess, inundated with just one small detail mm -hmm. I'm looking at the whole picture okay all right so that's it for the essential questions now it's the end of the day we're doing this interview after school and we like to call this segment sprint to the parking lot okay. where you're trying to get to your car without being stopped by all these questions that people like to ask you so okay. these are just you're answering them as quick as possible first thing that comes to your mind okay ready all right what is something people are obsessed with but you don't get the point of? TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay, after Charlie Brown and Snoopy, who is your favorite Peanuts character? Lucy. Oh. Besides, she wouldn't try to trick me on a traditional holiday. Man, she's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Peculiar, Charlie Brown, how some traditions just slowly fade away. <laughs> Favorite country musician? Uh, Jason Aldean. All righty. When, when is the earliest you're allowed to put up Christmas decorations? 
I would say between Veterans Day and Thanksgiving is when I put mine up, but. All right, so hot or cold weather? Oh, definitely cold weather. Which I don't, cold, like, to sweat. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't like to sweat. No, me neither. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather pile on blankets than be oh, hot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which golden girl fits your personality? <laughs> oh, God. Probably Sophia. Because <laughs> I can come up with a wisecrack in a heartbeat. No matter how bad things get, remember these sage words. You're old, you're sad, get over it. Uh, I love Rose. She's my heart. <laughs> uh, what's the scariest sound that you could hear in the middle of the night? Probably something scraping across the window. Yeah, that it's pretty freaky. Okay, is there any slogan or jingle that gets stuck in your head? Well, I've gone around for the past couple of weeks humming the Oscar Mayer theme song, but. Oh, I'd love to be an Oscar Mayer wiener. I don't know why, but sometimes things just do get stuck in my head. That's an oldie but goodie. <laughs> All right. Would you rather have to grow, hunt, and prepare your own food or only eat Taco Bell for a year? Oh, I would have to grow, hunt, and eat my own food because <laughs> I'm not a fan of Taco Bell. <laughs> me neither. As they call it Last question. Uh, did Ben ever put Daddy on the phone? I Finally, I think he did one day. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right, so you made it to the parking lot, and you can get out of here as long as you give me your exit ticket. Okay. And your exit ticket is if you just had this one chance to leave a mark on the world, you know, what is the one message you'd want to leave to students, parents, whomever is watching this? No matter what you do or where you go, always be kind to people because the quality of your character will get you much farther in life sometimes than the quality of your education. Wonderful, wise words. We can what put a little dash on Stephen Howard. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get that etched on the wall back here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining me. This has been Bell to Bell. You survived. It was quick and easy. I told you it would be. And stay tuned. Everybody like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. <laughs>